Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. Computer. Boom, man. So, Brides of Satan. First time watch for the both of us. Yep. Um... We'll be live in a minute. And like, I don't even know what uh, live thing it's going to. I didn't even pick a page, I don't think. I don't remember. But <laughs> we'll see. But it's, excuse me. It was um definitely, I liked it. It was, in, excuse me. Damn, excuse me again. It was interesting. I did enjoy it, though. Like, I had fun with it. It was interesting. Um a little different than I thought yeah. it was. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Like, uh-huh. I wouldn't even. I mean, I could see where it could be horror, especially at the end. Yeah, because the, the, the one demon that shows up for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, like, this can go with shit like a thriller type. Yeah, thriller. Um, yeah, it kind of. I, I, it's like there's categories out, like The Crow, a revenge movie. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, I could see that. But also, I get why because they were called the Brides of Satan. They were basically uh, Satanists. Yeah, some in the devil. So I could see why it can belong in the horror category. Oh, yeah. Oh. But, yeah, that's why. That's what I'm saying. Like, I could see why it's with the horror category. It's like on the line. It's like on the borderline. It's like it wants to step across for me personally to be horror. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely. That makes sense too. That makes plenty of sense. But it's like, uh, it was. You know what I liked though? I liked how they had. It was like what six chapters, six different chapters. Like, yeah, I, I like that was different. I've seen a few movies like that. They did it chapter by chapter. It's pretty good. It's like it's like a like a comic strip or like a book. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And I also it, I also like the um when there was blood, they did like the three Ds of blood splats on the camera, and it worked. It, it worked. I was like, what the hell's going on? I was like, <laughs> then I was like, oh, I got used to. It. I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, like it. <laughs> it was. It was. Um. Like I said, I really enjoyed the movie. It was a fun movie for me. Um. Yeah. I just wish the camera, uh, the, I don't know the word for it, at blank, but um, why there are video in it, like recording it. Yeah. I wish that the camera was panned out a little bit more. I, there was like, it seemed like a lot of close ups where you couldn't see anything around them. Mm-hmm. It was like right in their face and everything. I'm like, where the hell are they? You know, what happened? I can't see anything behind them on the sides of them or anything. Yeah. The other girl's talking and Harley hair to her on the, until it went to her. I'm like, what the hell did she come from? <laughs> It's kind of that camera work, but um, it was interesting. It's, uh, I, I was, you know, it reminded me of a movie while I was thinking about this, and I can't think of it. It's kind of like the, um, how it's set up, like with the camera and mm-hmm. everything like that. I've seen something like this before. Not, I'm not talking about the storyline, but just how it, the style of it. 
No, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, though. I get what you're saying with that. And like the movie surprised the movie surprised me. Like I wasn't expecting it to be the way it was. Like basically, you have this wild ass club. Seems like a fun thing, you know. It was like a goth slash biker club slash sex club. Sex sex club. There you go. Strip is like a strip club kind of. Well, yeah. There. I mean, I'll say this. If you're someone who likes titties in movies, there's a lot of titties in this movie. A lot. No I don't know. That that uh, club was kind of shady. I don't know if I would go in that one. That little yeah. like the, like the little normal couple. She wasn't normal though. Not she at all. Wild, she had a wild side. You could tell. She was like, "I'll get you." That's a surprise. She had tattoos everywhere. You well, know, the real actress. <laughs> she belonged to that club. Now him, different story. He was like wearing a button up, like he just came out of an office. I'll say this though, yo, like. With that scene, what was funny about it is, remember when they're first going in? So first of all, that club is wild. Again, a bunch of titties within the first few minutes of the movie, which I loved. But um, the funny thing about the movie was, like, because it did have its funny parts. The black character was hilarious, of course. But uh, <laughs> so when, they, when the they were, were, were they engaged? They weren't married yet. Were they engaged? They were engaged. Oh, they were engaged. Before they got married, she had, like, a surprise for them. Yeah. And pretty much she was like, she's pretty much giving him a free pass. Oh, yeah, definitely. And like, the funny thing was that that wasn't even the funny part. The funny part is when they go, they get to the club, the bouncer's outside, and he was like, uh, so you guys playing on releasing some baby gravy in there? <laughs> I, I was dying. And the guy was like, excuse me, he's like, what? Is there, pretty much he's like, are you guys gonna be fucking in there or whatever? Are you guys gonna have yeah. some intercourse or something? He was like, no, no. He's like, all right, we're going. And everybody that seen him at first, like, you guys are kind of square. What are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And they go in there, you know, they're talking, blah, blah, blah. See the strippers. Then, you know, it's the guy's birthday, like you said. And his fiance, you know, surprises him with a, a lap dance from the stripper on the stage. And the thing was, like, he was like, he was sitting there, like, he wanted to enjoy it, but he kept looking back. He was just like, yeah. he's like, is this a trap? Yeah, that goes through every guy's mind. But is and this a trap? <laughs> when you see her, she's like going with the flow, she's getting turned on by it. Yeah. And you're just thinking, I'm thinking in my head, like, I like where this is going. This, you know, this reminds me of a movie I've seen before. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't the same movie. Not at all. <laughs> and, um, like, it just, it went from that to the wildness, the craziness when the, these three, well. Yeah, came and robbed the bar slash club. Sorry, people, I can't move. <laughs> when these three come show up. It wasn't even a robbery. They made it seem like it was a robbery in the beginning. But they, they're looking for a couple to sacrifice. That's, I mean, you can rob somebody of their life. Yeah. Oh. That's what threw me off for a second. I was like, first they're robbing, like, give me the money. out. Then the one girl goes, I don't want your money. I'm not, this is not about money. I'm like, you first walked in and said, give me your fucking money. That was, that was, <laughs> maybe, maybe, hey, my thing is maybe they got a vibe. And I'm just going to show you guys. Let me see if I can share my screen. I'm just going to show you guys really quick what uh, the poster looks like. Really quick. So here you go. Can you see the poster, James? I can now. It just popped up. Okay, good, good. I'm not gonna keep it up there for too long, but this is this is the movie poster right here. And um this one right here. Yo, my first thing I thought the girl always on my right, I wanna say your This the blonde? Nope, the uh the Mohawk. This one? I thought that was Chrissy Mack. Oh that's at first. Thing. Like, cause it just it zoomed up on her face really quick, and I was like, "Wait a minute!" But then I was like, "Oh no, that's not her." <laughs> and yeah, you're right. You probably thought this one was the porn. St well, you thought because Chrissy Mac. But I mean, you, and I don't mean any disrespect by this. You wouldn't be surprised if all three of them were in those type of movies. But it was oh. just this one. Yeah, I was interested. The movie's called uh, "Birds of Satan." So that's the one that's in porn. I did research for the movie, people. I'm just saying. I'm no, uh, I did. I did IMB. I didn't do what you probably researched. <laughs> well, I had to make sure it was true. Like, I, you know, you, I take this show serious. I got to do my research. <laughs> you know, people will say I don't Google nothing or YouTube. But <laughs> I go, <laughs> no, I, I Google it. I Google, uh, like, the movie title and the cast. Then yeah. it usually brings me to IMB. IMDB and stuff? Yeah, whatever the hell that's called. Um. So I usually click on the first link, then I look at it, see what's going on. See if I've seen any other movies that uh, the actresses were in mm -hmm. and shit like that. Um, 
I don't take detailed notes. I just skim. Nah, I'm all right here. I don't do notes either just because it doesn't work for me. If I take notes, you're going to know that I took notes. I'm going to be reading off the paper and all that bullshit. I yeah. can't. It, the thing is, I should take notes, right? Because I, when I do that, I look at the cast, right? You can ask me one name right now. I'll be like, nope, I blank because I watched it this morning. So after a couple hours, no, I hear you. Names escape my head. And... See, this yeah. is why we need Chris. Even if he just takes notes for us, just look up the IMDb notes and send it to us, and we'll yeah, share. It us. Other. I'll, sh- I'll share the, it. The synapse and the actors' names. Yeah, but um, actually, speaking of Chris, really quick, myself, yourself, Chris's self, and Ibrahim's self, we're going to be reviewing um, Batman Forever. Oh. This Saturday, nine o'clock. took forever to end. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. But I haven't seen that movie in years. So no, me either. Maybe yeah. I'll have a different feeling about it, which we'll get back to this movie in a minute. But real quick, Popcorns and Pints, 9 o'clock Eastern time on Facebook and YouTube. Or sorry, Facebook and Twitch. Facebook on the Z Network and uh, Twitch on the Z Network. We will be going live discussing Batman Forever. Batman Returns episode will actually be dropping at 5, five o'clock Eastern time, audio and video, audio on Anchor, which I will share the links out when it's out, and video on YouTube, and I'll share the link when it's out, 5 o'clock Eastern time. So you get to watch that episode, which is about two and a half hours, and then 9 o'clock that night, you can tune into our Batman Forever special, which will be live and, you know, and Batman, the actually the first Batman movie, I finally released that episode earlier today. Audio and video. I shared it in the Z network, I believe, for the video. Yep. Remember the audio? I didn't, but I can after this. And back to this, though, yo. Going back, I, like I said, I believe it was about six chapters. Yeah, I believe it was about an hour and twenty minutes. It oh, wasn't bad. It wasn't too long. It wasn't. No. If that, that's the thing, when I see an hour and twenty minutes, I'm just like, oh shit. And I don't mean that in like a bad way. I mean that because sometimes with um, I'll just say sometimes with indie movies. You have these movies and they're too long, mm-hmm. and the story's not really going and flowing. But this was kind. Of, this was kind of like even keel through the whole through the whole movie. It had its ups, and then it'll go back to like the middle. Go up. It didn't yeah. go down too much for me. And I actually want to do something different. And I'm gonna introduce this in this episode right now. I meant to do it earlier in the episode, but we're not that far in. I want to rate the movie now in the beginning. Okay discuss it and see if our ratings change oh interesting okay so with that being said how many brides of satan would you give this movie i'm just using the title out of one out of ten i'm going to cut it in half i'm going to give it a five and like i told you earlier today which this is the very first time i've ever gave you a rating for a movie i said for the titties alone it's a four (laughs) there there was a lot especially in the beginning that was like a 20 minute dance scene yeah, Joe and like, you know, the producers, director, and all that. With that, I'm gonna give it. A, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go with you and give it a five. So that's why I was. That's why I was 120. You know, because uh, 20 minutes of it was uh, strippers dancing on poles in the beginning. No complaints <laughs> like at all. Yeah, I don't know if it was really 20 minutes. It seemed like it though. I was like, that. This is a long intro, but it's like it's one of those intros that didn't bother you. You're just sitting there like, oh, just like, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was shout out to Joe Bizarro. He's the director of this movie, by the way. But um which I will be interviewing him next Tuesday. That should that mm, I'm not sure if we're gonna go live or not, because I usually don't do interviews live. But uh yeah, so the titties, the knives. Like I, I like the kills in this movie. The kills that they did show. No, the kills are pretty cool. Kills were fun. Um, like uh, for example, I'm just gonna go with I'm trying to think of the one. All right, the scene because they're jumping around here. The scene where the old the old guy gets shot. Oh, oh, you talking about? He was like, "Oh, you guys want round two? He pulls yeah, out a sword he, out of his cane. Kills like all of them except for yeah. one. No, oh, because he was behind him. He didn't see him. He had a he had a uh, sawed off shot, uh, shot. shotgun. Which that 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 fucking cane knife was awesome. awesome. Yeah, I seen one before. I almost bought it. I almost bought one before. But um, um anyway, uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? He uh, 
But after he gets shot, when the chick sneaks up behind him and slashes the one dude's throat that shot the old guy, which and, right, and that's Lester Kenny, right? Or Kenny Lester? Wait, am I saying it backwards? <sighs> that's the guy where that uh, that's the the old dude's name, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. And he <coughs> he was a tough old he was a tough old fucker though. <laughs> He was a tough old fucker, and he toughened the girl. Up. He toughened the girl up. It was just. I have a little issue with that, though. That part. How he toughened uh, her up? Yeah, how he toughened. Like he, he, I don't even know what. It, I forgot. Did he have her drink something or anything? Like she had some like out of body experience, and all of a sudden she was like a badass and knew how to fight or something, but barely knew how to fight. <laughs> Stab. So it was like. Um, it's like she got some power. I was like, "Oh, what's going on here? Are we going like uh, supernatural stuff going now?" You know. Uh, so that part was like a little, but I didn't mind it. It kind of reminded me, like first part when I first seen it, it reminded me of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street when yeah. the one girl gets all her friends' powers, and all of a sudden she can just learn how to fight out of nowhere. Hey, it happens, man. It yeah. Happens. So I seen but that, and I was like, "Oh shit!" It was. Uh, <laughs> that was that. That's in all those type of movies though that are similar to this. You have like a. 20 minutes scene and then next thing you know people know people are badasses yeah it takes a lot longer than that to be a badass but uh it didn't bother me too much because the, no. the way the movie was like the type of the movie it was um what do you think of the demons look the demon okay the, i was gonna get that i was gonna wait till you actually brought it up and then you just did now i thought you were gonna wait a little bit that demon looked pretty cool i liked how it was like black looked like sludge then it had the teeth sticking out. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a, I got a problem with the demon though. I wish you'd seen more of it, because for one, the girl she's there to get revenge on the one chick with the mohawk. Mm-hmm. The demon pops out, and the girl's like going to stab it. Demon had like uh, powers, like knocked her away, like knocked the knife out of her hand, pushed her back. Yeah. Then it just stood there. Then the one girl, the leader, comes. Bum rusher and a fist fighter. Why didn't she just say demon destroyer and sit I, down in a chair and relax? I was wondering that same thing, yo. Like, why didn't I wish the demon did more? But I do going back to the look of it. It's so I, plain. It's basic. Like you can see, it just looks like someone poured like um, you know that shit where you can um, for the end of tools. You dip it in the can, and it comes the rubber handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of looks like someone just poured a whole bunch of that shit on them. Yeah, kind of still ho- almost human like, but it's like you see a lot of black sludge. Yeah, but it, it the thing is like it's it seems like it's a simplified simplified look, but it's not bad at all. Like it no, works. it's pretty cool. I, I it's better than like you know that fucking cheesy CGI. Oh yeah, demon shit. I thought this was pretty cool for what it is. I think I think this is pretty cool looking. Like if they had like a horde of these, oh, yo, that would be badass. Like they're like breaking through windows and shit, killing people. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Another another cool thing was, was which I said to you earlier too was um, I like the lighting in this movie. Oh yeah, like it was just it wasn't too dark. It was dark, but not too dark. Yeah. Exactly. Like it just worked. Like it, it makes sense. Like it, it, was, it was like the whole movie was like almost based through like night hours. Mm-hmm. But some movies, when you see night hours, like especially going in the clubs and shit, it's like pitch dark and you can't see shit. You're like, oh, I hate the light on. It's like you're sitting in your room and, and the, yeah. the TV glares and you don't see nothing. That type of dark. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I'm just going to. Really quick, I'm just might as well just scroll through a couple more pictures from this movie. Let me share the screen one more time. This is the scene you were talking about a few minutes ago with the old guy, yeah, and the main character, the main character where she I don't I forgot what he did exactly. I forgot that. too. I don't know if she ate something or drank something, but all, or I don't even know. If she, I forgot it could have been smoking something. I don't know. I might have turned my head or something during this part. Whatever it was, it was quick. It was, it, really was quick. Yeah, it was quick, but then she was starting to have these like outer body or in her mind things going on right here where she's seeing shit like this. Then all of a sudden she can fight. It's like it toughened her, toughened her up. It was like, you're a badass, you know, pretty much. 
pretty much. He's like, you're a badass now. You're going to be all right. I don't know if she got more strength, like if she got superpower strength, because she did drop that one old guy, that big tall dude, like put him in a chokehold. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so, it's, so is she a little bit stronger now? Like what happened to her? Like, well, I was a little confused. And for one, if this picture just by how this looks right here, what yeah. does that guy look like? Tell me what you're thinking. The main villain in Jim Carrey's The Mask, where the dude gets it, the mask. Oh, shit. I got, you know I'm going to have to look that up and pull it up on the screen, but I just want to go through these pictures really quick. From the side view, it looks like it. It looks like he put the mask on. He's like... He's like <laughs> there's the, we just talked about that and seen that. Here's yeah. the, again, here's the cover again. Birds of Satan. And that's another thing. They come out of the club and then they up stabbing each other. Like, bitch, don't fuck tell me what they're doing. They get in a fist fight with each other. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, it was like crazy. I was like, what the hell is going on now? Smaller picture. Oh, I remember. Uh, she, she did the depressing singing. She's the daughter of uh, Lester. Oh, the old guy. Yeah, Luna. Her name's Luna. Yeah, I I got this. I just didn't like that type of singing. That was my thing. Uh, yeah, it was, it was like a... Um, it was like a depressing opera style. A not a fan of opera. And like, uh, I'm not a big fan of rock, but I love the instruments, like the instrumentals for the, through, I mean, the soundtrack for this, for this movie was good. I love the rock. I wonder if they got, I don't know the bands. Like I didn't look that deep in it. I don't know if it was like a whole bunch of local bands that they got on here. Mm -hmm. I know one person said an original song somewhere. I forgot where it was, but um, it's, it reminded me of like a uh, garage bands, like grunge garage bands it wasn't bad though no it wasn't bad i'm a ro big rock fan that that music right there is something like if you ever go get a tattoo shop and this is the shit they play when you're laying in the chair then her yeah she was the main character right yeah is her name was it mindy amy fuck i, I forgot, forgot she called herself something zero at the end no I, I thought that was the main chick the main evil bitch Oh, maybe it was. Maybe it was. Yeah, her last name. Her, her was something zero. The one with the yeah. mohawk, I think. This is the... Is this the part where he's looking at his wife? His fiance? Yep, yep. This is the, like, are you sure? You can see it. Look, he has that, like... Is this a trap? Yep. Eyes, <laughs> like, staring at her. That was again. But, I mean, again... It's... it's this movie's gonna be out in December, late December. Which the director told me that. Uh, but the thing, when you look it up, it acts like it was out already. Like I seen like so many reviews on it. Like not like a lot yeah, of Corona, how's it going, man? Like, yeah. Yeah, I know. And like oh shit, what was I saying? Fuck, fuck. I said this. Now, now do you separate indie movies with uh like B movies and above? Do they have their own category? Like, or would you put this with B movies? Oh, uh, you might. I don't know. You might separate them. I, I think that's a good question. Maybe you separate them. I don't know. Somebody out there, if you guys know, would you do? Is it like indie and B movies kind of separate, or are they in the same? Because I feel like I think they're separate because I can. I feel like an indie movie can be an independent movie and have whatever budget. A B movies. I mean, they could be high budget, low budget. It's, it's just independently funded or whatever the case may be, even crowdfunded, I guess. Okay. Versus this is my opinion. This is no facts. Versus like a B movie, it's usually like. Not necessarily indie, but just like a lower budget kind of like um okay a bunch of them. <laughs> there's still like oh, a bunch there's, of them. There's a ton. Thanks, killing. <laughs> that might, I think that's indie though. Oh, okay. I think I, I thought that was a B. I'm not sure. I like I say, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know the if they separate them or not. I never uh, looked into it. Oh, I see what you're saying now. I can kind of, I can kind of see that. What part? What are you talking about? I'm about to show you in a second. Um, oh, the mask, dude. Ask, yeah, yeah. The shape of the face, like the wideness and the cheeks are big. Yeah, yeah. That's what it looked like to me. Even the suit, like the shoulders, <laughs> like a Frankenstein-looking shoulder. And I'm just trying to pull it up. Give me one second. Something wrong with it, but I'm just saying that's the first thing I when oh, I looked no, at it. I was no, like, oh no. shit. 
Let me show you right here. You can kind of like it, I can see what you're saying. Like you're saying, like the shape. Like the, yeah, like the shape, the, the shoulders, and the side of the face. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah, uh, I could definitely see that. And I mean, I, I wonder if that inspired him at all. Oh, you know, a little bit. There would, you go. There's, there's a question for you. To ask him. <laughs> right. Definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely get some details on the demon. Like I want to know what they covered him in. Is it just paint? But it looks like different than paint. It kind of looks like um. Like I said, some kind of like a uh, silicone or sign yeah. on them. It, I don't know, like thicker than paint. What I can yeah. say. No, I know what you mean. I mean, it could be a good thick paint, some sort of like tar or just yeah, like a tar texture. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Like I'm no movie late no, I don't know special effects at all. I'm yeah. I hear you. Funny story, which I've told this before, but um. This past no, October of 2019, my brother and I were doing um. Well, my brother, my wife, and I were at a con, right, Scaracon. But uh, my brother and I were doing panels, and there was a panel where they had us doing for special effects. Now we were supposed to be just moderating the panel, so you're supposed to have like an expert up there, and I was just kind of like you know just mod- sitting there talking, talking, moderating, asking some questions, but mainly letting them take a, you know take the show. Nobody was there but us. Actually, first it was just me up there, and my brother, and my wife went to go grab something to eat from a food truck. They were just coming in, and my brother's like, "I'm gonna let him sit up there and sweat a little bit, fucking asshole." Which I would have done the same thing, so I respect it. And we got up there to talk about like, yo, yeah, we, we, we were just basically saying we like special effects. How special effects is better than CGI? How special effects is dope? And like, just maybe we had even throwing out a couple of movies that had some good special effects. And then we started asking the crowd about it and like what they thought of it and this, that, and the third, and if anybody's involved in it. And we were so fucking lucky. <laughs> we had, I believe, four people. Two of them did like haunted house stuff. Okay, cool. Two of them were like makeup. You know, they did like special effects makeup and all that kind of stuff and like cosplay type. So they had a way better. They can explain everything way better, like actually give details and shit, not just say what they liked. <laughs> yeah. I liked. So we ended up asking them to come up. There was, and luck, listen to this. It was just like luck. There was four people. There was four mics. There was four chairs. Nice. And we were just like, you know what? Take it. You guys, listen, you guys can have this panel because we have absolutely no idea what the hell we're talking about. We sat in the crowd, though, watched it, clapped, had a great fucking time. Shout out to them. I hope you guys see this one day. And um, yeah, we just thank at, at the end of it, they 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 thanked us for giving them that experience. They're like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you saved my ass. Yeah, we had no idea what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> like, I was on other panels where it's like, um, there was like mo- movies on a shoestring budget, for example. I was on, I was up there with a guy named a gentleman named Ron Bonk, which who he did the movie House Shark, which I think is fucking amazing. It's just a fun, cheesy horror movie, horror cheesy comedy horror. You would like it, I think. But anyway, uh, yeah, like, and he was on the actual thing to, you know, talk about horror, you know, doing movies on a shoestring budget. And we were just talking, you know, indie movies and stuff like that, horror movies between us and the crowd. And that's one where I met a guy who was a, a part of the Z Network. His name is Thomas. Thomas Clark, shout out to him. Shout out to the Turkey Network. Shout out to the Z Network. And, like, I reached out to, I was handing out business cards, and he actually emailed me and linked up i had him on my show a couple times and he has some cool things going on and behind the scenes he's working on for the z network which it's gonna be dope but uh yeah man it was just oh man just talking about this like this movie here makes me think of horror conventions because it's an indie movie yeah. and i mean you can say about all horror movies but the reason why i'm saying that is because i was just talking about the shoestring budget thing and i'm and because like one thing I try my best to do, which when Con come back, I'm going to do it even more so, is I always try to link up with an indie art, like buy an indie, buy at least one indie movie every con. I, I try my best to buy at least one indie movie. I make sure I have, I try to have a couple of dollars to do that. I think, I don't think I did last con, but again, next time I'm definitely going to start doing that just because it's, it's just one of those things where it's like, you may, I mean, you might find a movie that's a piece of shit, like The Butcher, or you might find a movie that's fucking, amazing like an amazing awesome indie movie and you're just like holy shit this is fucking crazy this is so good like uh i'll say if you want to count it indie slash crowdfunder um never hike alone oh yeah that was good and 
it, it's just one of those things where it's and not on, not only that, but it's you gotta look at it like these guys put their time, blood, sweat, and tears into this shit. Guys and girls, sorry. At the least, you could do is give it a chance. I mean, I I'm always gonna give you credit for actually doing the movie, for not just saying you're gonna do it, but for putting something out. I don't have any movies out there. I've never made a movie in my life. I'm not in any movies. I'd love to be in an indie horror movie. So I'll let your boy. Um. But yeah, like I said, I've never been in the movie, so I can't take. I'll give you credit for that, and I'll rate indie movies a little different than I will non-indie movies, just because I'm like, okay, you know, that's just how I am. But I will be honest about them, and I just uh, like with this one, I liked it. I really did. I know I keep saying that, but I really did like it. I f- again. Because of the title, because of the group name, Brides of Satan, Birds of Satan, sorry. Or no, Brides of Satan. I was right the first yeah. time. I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> Brides of Satan um, and the demon at the end. That's like the only horror element I got from it. I'll yeah. think this is more of like a thriller, which I know horror. To, I mean, you could ask fans across the board. <clears throat> For me, I'll use myself as an example. Horror and thriller and sci-fi kind of teeter kind of close together. It's like what's in there to make it horror or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. So I guess you could say if you use just the if you use the demon and the brides of Satan, you could say that's horror. But you can just it's it's like a horror slash thriller. I'll say that it's a or a matter of fact, I'll say it's a thriller slash horror. And it's not a bad one. It's once it comes out, people, I'll get the dates and stuff. I'm gonna have the director on next week. And uh, yeah, that's when we can find out when it comes out for you guys to view and tell me what you guys think of it. Again, I don't think it's a bad movie at all. I've definitely, definitely seen a fuck ton worse. Not just indie. I'm talking movies that are not indie at all, like Blood Fucking yeah. Lake. This is better. Than, this blows Blood Lake out of the water. Oh, yeah. This blows better. the picture out of the water. Like, I, I will say this <clears throat> about this movie. And I, my rating actually went up a couple points in my mind. But you guys will find that out in a few minutes. I will say this. You ready? This movie was better than The Butcher. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. I agree. Not only that, that's not saying much, but no, this movie, the acting wasn't as bad as I expected. I don't mean, I mean, like, the acting was pretty decent. The acting was pretty, you could, but you, you could kind of tell that these were like, they're not like high end actors and actresses, of course, mm. but the acting was actually pretty good. For an indie film, I thought the acting was pretty good. And that right there, like, and it was a movie that, um, it was fun. It had its funny moments. You know what I mean? It had its cheesy moments, yep. but it worked for the movie. It worked for the film. That's one thing I respect and appreciate about it is, is how it was. It just, I mean, and I love the titties, of course. Got to go back to the titties. Like titties were a 10. Titties were a 10. But uh, no, seriously, like it, <clears throat> like it, you know how movies like kind of, there's certain movies where you see they take their self. Like, I feel like the butcher would have been better. I mean, besides the sound issues and all that stuff, it would have been better if, it slowed down some. No. Kind of told a little bit of a better story. Cause I think the concept, yeah. the concept was cool. The concept was fun. No, the concept was fun. It's just, it was, I don't know how to phrase it, blocky. Like it'll cut to like scenes. Yeah. It was it's like, I don't it know. Was, it's hard it, to was, it was rough around the edges. Yeah. Like it was one, it was just something that, I mean, if they do a sequel, which I believe they are, I would watch it. I'm not saying I'm going to love it because I probably won't. I didn't love the first one. I didn't really like the first one. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. But it was just, uh, uh, to me, it's like a one time watch. The only way I'd watch it again is if I were to do a review on it on the actual show. I know I did something with uh, my brother on um, the horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy Twitch channel. I don't know if the video's still up there or not. But other than that, like, yeah, it mm-hmm. was just. Like I said, if if you ever wanted to review it, James, or anybody ever wants to review that movie, I will. And I will do it live. And I'll rewatch it again just to do the review, just to remember it. So that's an open invitation to do it live. Oh, and here's another open invitation for people. James, this is you included because you're my co-host. So you may or may not have a choice. <laughs> Christmas horror movies. I'm, I'm down. I'm always trying to find one. Through like I film. said, like I scan and I get so like 
what the hell? There's so many out there, but I always end up something like a different version of a Krampus or I I know I like doing one with one or a couple with um Slinky and Casey. Got their names right this time. I know for one actually they, they said they wanted to do the Gremlins because I'm doing Gremlins on um, Oh okay, Gremlins. Oh, that's old school. All right. Christmas Eve, I'm doing the Gremlins movie. I don't, I don't know, know if you're free or not. I don't know if you're gonna be home or not. I I'm not sure. I'll I'll be home, but I don't know what the hell's going on. But if you're free, Christmas Eve, Gremlins. But even bef- like up through, I want to do more than just, you know what I mean? Like from, I see, like, for example, tomorrow I got a show. I'm doing Halloween 3 tomorrow, but Thursday, Friday, and all throughout. You know what I mean? I know we have a show Saturday. Um, I'm trying to think. I know I'm doing Black Christmas. I just It's on one of these Saturdays. I just forgot which Saturday. So if oh, you that, that's a Christmas movie. Doing that one again, the, the OG one, but this time it'll be live. Oh, so it's the original. Yeah, yeah. From okay, Jordan. Okay. So if you want to hop on that, you're more than welcome to. I think that's the fuck. I don't. I don't remember what day. I think it's the twelfth. It's either the twelfth or the nineteenth. I have it in my calendar. I don't feel like looking that up. But um, yeah. So this month of December, if you want to be a guest on Horror with Search Thirty, trying to get know. those Christmas movies in. Let's get these Christmas movies in. More than likely, James will be there for most of the episodes and any other random person that wants to hop on. But uh, I'll try to make as many as I can. You know? Shoot me an email at horror. Hang on, I'm about to type in for you guys. Horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com. Again, it's horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com. And I will type it in. I wonder if this will show up. I'll show, type it in the restream thing. That means I'm going to have to start doing some research and try to find a new one that I've never seen yet. There's one with um, Bill Goldberg. Oh, it's he's Santa Claus. I, part of me feels like I've seen it. I I know I did. I know for a fact I did <clears throat> one with it. You want to watch the new Mel Gibson one? Fat Santa? So, wait, you said Mel Gibson? Yeah. I think oh, it's called... Matter everybody, of fact, matter everybody, of said it, everybody said it's good. Matter of fact, it's not horror, though. I'm, oh, but, 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 all right, people. So here's here's the thing. The Z Network has another show called Popcorn and Pints where it's all non-horror movies. It's like this, but non-horror. It's exactly like Horror Source 30, but non-horror movies and shows and interviews. So, Christmas movies. We'll do them. Either or. Horror or non-horror. Like Home Alone. Home, I love, I love Home Alone. Those are, Home Alone 1 and 2, are, I love them. Some people argue Die Hard. <laughs> listen, listen, and this is why I said this is why I had my argument, which you guys will see on Batman Returns. Why I feel it's a Christmas movie. Billy, what's good? Lot of people do. It is. It's a Christmas movie. And uh, for anybody who doesn't think it is, um, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. It's a Christmas fucking movie. And it's it's a good Christmas movie at that. It's actually my Batman Returns. I just realized is probably my favorite Christmas movie. Now, if you want to say Christmas movie that fits the whole Christmassy Christmas theme and he he ha ha Christmas Christmas kiss kiss kiss, Home Alone easily Home Alone one and two. Mm. Which what's yours? If you don't include like Batman or Die Hard or Two Girls One Cup. Dude, I, I, that's something I got to think about. Like, I can't even recall. Because I don't... I, I'm not one of those people like... I don't... Like Batman. I, I wouldn't say, like, Batman would be a Christmas movie. See. To me, a Christmas movie, a mov- the movie I have to base around the, the whole theme of Christmas. Does Home Alone count as that? I... I was I would throw Home Alone actual Christmas movie. You no. know, the parents that movie should have been five minutes. Parents should have got arrested. The only reason why I'm asking is Home Alone that for both of them, because yes, it does happen around Christmas. Yes, there is a Christmas yeah. theme to an extent. Actually, yeah, I guess it is because he gets no, the- yeah because he gets his own presents. He sets his own Christmas shit up in the house by himself. Yeah, so you're right. Yeah, it is. It is okay. I take that back. And they're trying to get home for Christmas to be with them. They left him twice. They don't like that motherfucker. No, they don't. I don't know how you keep forgetting about him. He is annoying, I guess. Could you imagine that shit, though? Like, not only do you forget your kid, but somebody breaks into your house. 
Yeah. And like <laughs> double whammy, man. Yeah. And the crazy thing is it's like real quick, the funny the crazy slash messed up thing. I remember Home Alone One, which I'm gonna have when I'm watching that movie, I'm probably gonna have to have pizza. I don't know how I'll ask this question after, and then we'll get back to this movie. Because we're pretty much done with the review of this movie. We got our things in. We'll review it. Matter of fact, let's get our reviews, and then I'll go on this little Home Alone rant. Let's okay. get our... Did your rating change? Did my rating change? From your five? I'm go... No, I think I'm going to keep it as a five. Okay. I'm going to say it's a seven for me. Indie seven. Mm-hmm. And See, if it, It'd be different. That's why I asked you about the categories. Mm-hmm. Because in my head, I'm thinking... I'm. I'm Right now, I'm throwing it into like with B movies. Mm-hmm. So, out of all the B movies and everything I've seen, this will fall in a five. But if I separate and start separating the indie movies, then this could be higher in the, the indie world. Mm-hmm. But I'm not familiar with it yet, so I'm going to keep it at my basic ratings. So I'm going to stick with a five. It's not bad. A five is not bad. Oh hell no! Five's not bad at all. Um, under five, it's, I'm starting going on, oh, getting a little bored of it. You know, like a four is like, oof, I barely, you know, it was decent. I made it through. Honestly, I feel like under that, it's like you got, you're in trouble. <laughs> for, for me, I feel like for indie movies, a four and up isn't bad. A four and up for indie isn't bad. Nine indie movies, a four and down, which with nine indie, you already know how I do it. It's fucking negative 10 to a positive 10. Indie movies, it's just from one to 10. I'll even say zero to ten for indie. <clears throat> but uh like Trainer Busain, is that indie? I wanna say it is. I'm I don't know. For sure. I'm I'm honestly I don't know, but that was a fucking if it is, that's a ten. That's a fucking badass motherfucker. I know I did a review on that, but I want to do it live. Like there's plenty of movies I've already done on here, people. So I, it might not be an indie. I think the I think they had a way higher budget. I think it was Yeah, they had it, I mean, it was like uh, movie theater worthy. That was a dope movie. That was oh, a movie. All right, anyway, so I, I'm gonna take that back. That might not be indie. Like I said, but <laughs> this movie's an indie seven for me. And now I want to go to Home Alone. James, you're white. You yes. like pizza. Do yes. you like milk? I love milk. Do you combine those two like they did in the movie? Like have milk <laughs> with eating pizza? I believe it was the cousin. I can't I, remember. I won't dip it in it, but I'll have milk as the drink. Oh, that's disgusting. No, what are you talking about? Cheese? Oh, you know? That's too much dairy. Like, for me, for one, I love pizza. Cheese pizza, pepperoni pizza, whatever. Obviously, I'd rather have toppings on my pizza than just boring ass cheese. I'm not a big milk drinker. Like, if I have milk, it'll be almond milk and it'll be chocolate almond milk or something like that. Like, making, you know, making chocolate milk with almond, whatever. But if I'm going to have something to drink with pizza, it has to be. Beer, soda, juice, like it, it can't be milk. Milk would be like the very last, even almond, chocolate almond milk would be like the very last choice. See, I'm the person, like I can't drink beer like normal like that, like have a drink for like a dinner. Like it's rare if I do. The only way I'll do it if I'm at a restaurant and have like something new, I will try. Mm-hmm. But like if I'm sitting home, I'm only sitting here like, oh, what do you want to drink? Oh, grab me a beer out of the fridge. I'm not that type of person. Like I'd rather have milk or like say a juice. I don't I don't like drinking soda anymore. I I'm like for the most oh, part, soda. as far as soda goes, I mean again if I'm having pizza or whatever here and there. But most most of the time when I actually I'll say ninety yeah, that's most of the time. Ninety nine percent of the time when I'm drinking soda, there's some sort of alcohol in it. <laughs> Just, <'cause laughs> I'm not really a big soda. Like I'm not drinking yeah, soda. No, trust me, I'll drink a lot of soda if it had alcohol in it. I'm right now. I'm drinking, um, you know, those little pow- the qu- the sugar free powder packs you can get. The little packets, they're like, like a dollar. Lights. Similar to that, but it's this this brand. It's the Starburst brand. Oh, okay, yeah. You told me about the Starburst stuff. P- Yo, you have to try for one. If you like Pink Starburst, you're gonna like this. But it's Pink Starburst with hundred proof uh, New Amsterdam vodka. Jesus, it's delicious. I didn't put that one. I only put like. Maybe that much vodka in there. It's not that much, but it's good. And I have one of the, you know, the mixer cups, the shakers cups. Yeah. With the, I put, I mixed it in. Like I put the vodka in. <clears throat> then of course, because I make the stuff with water, so I put the water in there and I had the powder in there and just shook it up. But it's so good. Nice. What about if you skip the water, you just fill the cup with vodka and flavor it. Uh, if it was a weaker vodka, I would do it. 
<clears throat> but with the hundred proof, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I can't, but I'm just saying I, don't, I have to get up for work in the morning. <laughs> I'm in my thirties now. I just turned thirty five, November eighteenth. So it's like we don't wake up the same as we would back. You know. Okay, I'll say I won't even do that. I'll say twenty one. I won't say seventeen, eighteen. I'll say back yeah, where twenty one. Yeah, when well, I was legal. Yeah. Yeah. Back twenty one years old, making these drinks, drinking all day and night and fucking getting up the next day like nothing happened. Now you're just like, fuck. I work yo, listen listen to this, man. I work from home. I would have trouble getting up to go to work and I yeah. downstairs. Yo, so I yo. can't do that shit. Now smoking, that's different. I can get high as fuck tonight if I wanted to and be wake up fine the next day. Yep. Oh, that's so good. It's so good though. <clears throat> so popcorn and pints again this Saturday, nine o'clock Eastern time. Batman Forever. Live <laughs> excuse me, live review on the Z Network on Facebook, the Facebook group and the Z Network on um the hell's that shit called? Twitch. And that's I, I'm excited for it, man. Like I, I really hope that I like that movie better <laughs> than I did when I've seen it however many years ago it was. Yeah. I feel it, that way about yeah. any movie that I rewatched though. And this is what this is when George Clooney comes in? Yeah, doesn't he do who do, he does he do the last two? Yeah, I think so. I think it's George Clooney and uh Chris O'Donnell or some O'Donnell. O'Donnell plays Robin. One more thing though, here's something: bat nipples don't come in until uh, Mister Freeze. <laughs> or uh, what is that? That's uh, Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. And I think that's when uh, I'll wait. I'm gonna wait. I'll tell you off yeah. the air, but I'm gonna wait for my for this hot take. The best part of Batman, uh, whatever that shit is called. Um, shit, man. I really don't have much more to say about this movie. I think this mm-hmm. movie again. I think it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Joe, I can't wait to interview you next Tuesday. Thank anybody who was in here watching and listened to us ramble on. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Horror Star 30 Podcast, of course. Go check out the Z Network, people. The Z Network is a network for creators by creators. Some awesome shows on there. And as a matter of fact, what I will do one last time is share my screen. <laughs> the commute. Downstairs be rough. Mad family members jamming up traffic. Yo, but the the Billy, hold up, hold up. I gotta respond to this. The funny thing is, oh Billy is like the commute downstairs during the work week. So you know my step, you know Gabriel and Fernando. They're asleep. And my wife's already at work. So it's just me and my and the puppy Lilith and my big ass. It's me, Lilith, and Xavier, which Lilith and Xavier are two dogs. So Lilith eats at uh about I'm telling you guys this for a reason. Lilith eats around uh, 5.15 in the morning-ish. My wife feeds her in the morning before she goes to work, lets her out, then brings her back up and puts her in a little puppy cage to go to bed. And we put we keep her in the crate because she's nuts. If she's out of it, she'll pee, whatever. She doesn't pee in her crate. She sleeps in her crate, and that's the only time we put her in there. If you have a problem with that, fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> um, But no, so I'll, I'll get up in the morning. Sometimes I'll go take my morning pee, bathroom right across the hall, then I'll come back. Throw my shirt on, whatever the case may be. Throw my my slides on my feet. I'll get up. Xavier is fucking being a dick because he's hungry and I cook for him now. He's whining and all that bullshit. So I tell him to shut up about 15 times. Open the cage, grab Lilith, grab my water jug, go downstairs. I'm telling you guys, my this is what I do every morning. I put my jug down, usually in the kitchen. <clears throat> go to the back door, bring both the dogs out to pee because, you know, I she's, they have to pee. So I let them go out and pee. Xavier goes right out, pees, comes right back in. Lilith will be sniffing around, then pee, and then sniff around some more and take forever to come in. So I have to go grab her. I don't care if you guys are bored from this rant. Listen. <laughs> so, yeah, traffic isn't too bad in the morning. But it is it is a long commute because, Billy, you've been here before for the fights. You've seen the stairs. I got to go all the way down those stairs, walk all the way to the dining room from my room, Open up the work laptop, turn it on, and this is after I let the dogs out. After I do that, I put Lilith in her playpen thing, like a pin thing. 
I uh, turn the laptop on or I put her in the chair and turn the laptop on one or the other. And then I'll get Xavier's food, feed him, warm his food up, feed him. Then I got to walk all the way back to the dining room from the kitchen, which is really literally the next room. Cause one of those kitchens where there's two entrances. You can walk around like that. Yep, yep. <laughs> Billy said, I couldn't do it. I'd call out. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. From home, call I, hold up. Could you imagine calling out of work? Because like, yo, I got to call it. Like, just imagine. I don't care. I'm not going to mention. I say our supervisor's name on air. So just imagine, dude, they'll call her supervisor. You know how our supervisor, you know how she is. Well, your old supervisor, my supervisor now. Just call her like, yeah, uh, yeah, this is Aaron. Or texting, call and texting, whatever. I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it in because um, traffic. <laughs> traffic. My house is nuts right now. I can't make it to my computer. Like, what? Traffic? Are, are, the hour traffic yeah. I'm home. Where's your computer? Home. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I just can't make it because traffic is just wild. Now people are calling out. They're they're called. Uh, people are calling them mental health days now. Ah, fuck that! I need my money. <laughs> like, got, like, if I'm gonna take a day off, a spend, which I've taken days off working from home because you know either because you gotta take care of stuff, running around, or fuck it, I just want to chill. Like, I love working from home. As far as like, if it's working from home, or working from the office, I love working from home. I get I'm way more productive. Overtime is better, but um. What I'm saying with this is it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I love working from home. Um, But you get bored with the work. Like, the work isn't fun. I'm not sitting here saying, like, the work, oh, yeah, he, he, I'm working from home. It's fun as hell. Because no work like, is fun. Music, watch movies and shit. But it's not fun. And it's just like, at some days you're just like, you know what? I need to take a day or two off just to kind of relax my brain. Because what I do is when I work overtime, and James is the same way, when you have overtime, well, me and him, I'll just say, I'll speak for us. Monday through Saturday, working from home or when we when we had overtime when we worked at the office, but I'll just say working from home, Monday through Saturday, we're working. Yeah. And that's tiring. <laughs> like, <laughs> mentally, not like physically draining, but mentally, it, it just gets tiring. Shit, I'm getting up at sad, on Saturdays at 5.30 in the morning just to yep. fucking go downstairs and work. <laughs> yep. <laughs> six hours. I'll do 6 to 12. And like, I love it though. Like, I mean, you get that paycheck, it's just like fuck it. <clears throat> but um, I don't even know where I was going with this. Yeah, so the traffic isn't that bad in the morning. The dogs are annoying in the morning, or the big dog especially. But the traffic's not too bad. Um, mine's easy. I haven't gotten lost yet on my way to work, which yeah, is yeah. good. It's dark as hell now. That's waking true. up that early, yo. My house is like pitch black. But I turn like the. So you walk out my room. The bathroom's right across the. We have. One and a half bathrooms, the full bathrooms are across the hall. And then, like, there's a a, th- a light switch in the hallway, of course. So I can see down the stairs. So I'm good. But it's just like every morning I wake up, I feel like, and I, I don't know if this, I know it's not just me. I feel, and this will be the, like the last little rant, then we'll end the show. <clears throat> but I feel like when I get up in the morning, that's like the most comfortable the bed feels is when you first oh, yeah. wake up. And sometimes I doze right back off. Like I'll wait, like what I'll, I have my alarm set for six thirty, and I will wake up. Some days I wake up at like four or five, and I'll doze off till six thirty. Some days I wake up at like five and doze off. Some days I wake up at six and fall back asleep till six thirty. There's been a couple of times, James, where I wake up at six thirty, hit the dismiss button on the alarm, fucking fall back asleep, wake up at like seven six fifty, and I said fifty six fifty. I'm just like fuck. Okay, <laughs> yeah, ten minutes to run down, turn the shit on. Yeah. I can't. I have to wake up and relax, like get ready. Even I'm home, I still have to set myself up. Like I wake up five every morning. I will go to the bathroom and I'll go sit on my couch and watch TV until like six fifteen. Mm-hmm. Because I I do I work out in the morning now, but it's different now. I work. I make. I got like a little man cave. My bench is in the room where I work. Or you know, so yeah. I'll do a case if I go to the bathroom. I'll sit down. I'll do a couple sets. And I'll go back to my desk. That's like, like between that's, places. That's not a bad idea, though. People working from home, my black ass self included. Depending on what you do, like if you're doing what we do, where you're doing computer work, if you're doing cases and shit, not do a case, drop down, do at least five. I'll say, yeah, I'll say yeah. at least five, if not ten, at least five push ups, whatever type of workout, or do curls, or whatever, do at least five to ten curls or push ups. Yeah, do the whole day, man. 
I just started. This is way better than me just waking up like because I used to wake up at five because my bench was in a different room. Mm-hmm. I'll do I'll do like a, a hour workout and go right to work. But because it's in the same room, I don't have to rush it because I actually work out through my whole shift. I'm actually gonna start doing that again because I used to, I did it in the beginning then I stopped. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing it again because the perfect time to do it is what because you know how our cases go. And I don't want to bore everybody, but I'm gonna real quick. Like I, I told you how I do my case. I do the service credit first. I send out the letters first, the um, you know, the salary letter or whatever. Yeah. And then I'll do that case because you know it takes about five minutes or so, five ten minutes, it, depending on how Portal's working, to go to that one task before we can do more work. So there, that's the point where I, when I did do it is when I do my workouts. Yep. And then go back to the case and finish things up. So I'm like, I should just start doing that again because it's not that hard. They just drop down and do a few push ups. Ah, your home is not like you have to do 10 push ups. I, can, I can even do 10 push ups. Like, say I do 10 push ups for the first one or whatever, and then 10 curls, or do, say I do 10, 12 push ups, and then the next case I do 10 to 12 curls and then just keep switching back and forth. Yep. I got to get back into that shit, man. Yeah, I do it, man. I've been doing this whole week ever since I switched living rooms. That's I good. got my little man cave down there, got my bench, got TV. It's- is that where your um, computer set up now? Is that where you're recording from? Not, not right now. No, because I need the freaking uh, hardwire oh. Ethernet. But my work computer has no problems with the Wi-Fi, so I have it on my desk. Near but the back you know what it is because you're using you're using more power with the video versus just you yeah know, for work, which is cool. Yeah, it's on. It's weird. I don't know why it does it. It's only Zoom. Zoom hates me. But it's a video. Th- but I'm saying though, because it's a video, like you're recording a video. Well, I'm recording on my end, but you're on a video. Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Could you now? I'll ask you that. No, I'll ask you that off air. Um. Anyway, like I said, people. Oh, I meant to show you guys. Let me just show you guys really quick the YouTube channel for uh, the Z Network, and then we will skedaddle out of here. Let's get to it. Z Network. The Z skedaddle. Network. Yeah. Oh, hold up, my channel. Where is the share button? Share screen right here. Last time I'm going to share real quick, people. So this right here is the Z Network. And I I highly, 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 highly suggest you check it out because there's some awesome fucking content creators on here. You have the Horror Surf 30 podcast, which you know is myself. And I'm three, count them, uno, dos, tres, one, two, three, three subscribers away from a giveaway. Like I said, 200 and 250. Well, 200, the first giveaway, it's going to be a random one. 250 is the clown and around giveaway, which is going to be a hoodie that was donated by your boy James sitting right over there. And the It movies. The 200 is going to be surprise. It's going to be random. It's always going to be random horror stuff. So you're two away, huh? Yeah. Th- no, three away. Sorry, three away. Oh, three away to 200? 200. And then after that, I need 250. And then after that, it'll be bigger. It'll be higher numbers. But uh, so we have Horror Research 30, a great podcast. We have Eddie Last Words. Amazing podcast. Definitely check it out. And this is all, all these are the Z Network. These three are horror. He's horror slash, but he, he's a, I'll talk about that when I get there. Anyways, she does reviews. This is any last words. Joe, she does, um, she does horror themed cooking. I say that again. Horror themed cooking. Yes, horror themed cooking. She has a show called Joe's Creepy Kitchen, which she does on Fridays. Every Friday, it's at 11 o'clock Eastern time, 8 o'clock Pacific time, Cali time. Yep. Horror Gamer, he drops content every fucking day. Big shout out to Harvey. Big shout out to Joe. Dreams the Creator. He does like, um, he's a videographer. He's a photographer. He's going to be doing like, uh, Pretty much like how to type of videos for certain things, like the basics of how to do this with this with the camera. He's gonna do videos of like must haves if you want to be a photographer, a videographer, like what you should have. And again, like how to is like to edit a video, to edit a photo and stuff like that, like basic stuff. Nice. Story from a bar. Chris, you've seen him on Z Network. Are you seen him on Horror Story? Which you have seen. Pop, popcorn. You, oh, actually, you've seen everybody but Dreams on Horror Resource 30 and on um, Popcorn and Pines. Well, you haven't seen these on Popcorn and Pines yet. These three. But Chris, stories from a bar. He goes to like local breweries, mom and pop type of breweries. And well, this was pre COVID. I think he started, he does, he did a few, but pre COVID. Stories from a bar. T- 
talks to brewers and all this stuff at a bar and it's awesome. He has some good I, IPA drinks. I'm not an IPA guy myself, but he loves them. And these brewers, and he's putting these, like he's helping put these businesses on the map even more so locally, which I think is an amazing thing he's doing. The Flying Turkey Network is the guy Tom I was telling you about. Now he just graduated from film school, I believe in April. And he's a creator himself. He did a short film. He's going to be doing more short film things. and Just a bunch of awesome, awesome content on here. Let me go to the playlist real quick. Just to show you guys this. So we have Popcorn and Pints. This is the playlist. This is the one I was telling you about, which we do um, non-horror movie reviews, non-show, you know, movie reviews and shows. Horror Star Sturdy, you guys already know. Source from a bar I just mentioned, and I swear I just mentioned Horror Gamer, but just just check this out, people. Just check it out. Um, and then Dreams the Creator again. He has his own channel on here. We're gonna have some indie stuff on here. Hopefully, we're gonna have some. We're gonna have some people who are gonna <clears throat> once we get it all said and done and set in stone that are gonna send us indie horror, indie films in general, not just horror, indie films in general. They're gonna have a section on here. So if you're an indie film creator, if you're a podcast creator, if you're a creator in general, music, movies, podcasts, whatever. <clears throat> videos, you know, as long as that's some video audio type stuff, you want to be a part of the Z network, let us know and we could discuss some stuff. You own all of your rights. Like we're not, this is just a creator. This is a, uh, like I said, it's a network for creators by the creators trying to help one another grow and seeing where shit goes. And um, yeah, like <clears throat> real quick, last thing I'll say about the Z network is Popcorn and Pints is a Z network exclusive. So the only way you'll be able to hear those episodes or watch those episodes is if you're a part, if you hit that subscribe button, which if you can't find it, let me just show you where that is really quick. Oh, this is really your channel. All right. I don't know where it is, but <laughs> you hit the subscribe <laughs> button on the Z network and uh, all these, matter of fact, you look, you hit this subscribe button, 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 this subscribe button and you go on the Z network, which I'll do right here. Look, just to show you guys, the Z network, we only have 20, we have 22 people right now in 22 videos. We need more. But uh, you hit that, you go to subscribe, what you just seen right here, actually. You know, so this, I can't subscribe to it because I'm a, I'm on it. I'm on the channel. So, yes, hit that fucking subscribe button and join the Z Network. I'm telling you, you guys will not regret it. It's going to be very funny, very entertaining. You're going to have me on there. James is a part of the Z Network because he is a co-host of Horror Research 30. He is a co-host. Why? One, he's my boy. Two, it's my fucking show. Three, through this whole pandemic, he's been there like, yo, he's been free. I'm not saying... Nobody else would have been there if they couldn't be. He's been free to record like from fucking March to I think from March to June. He was out of work from March to July. I was out of work. We were getting paid. So don't worry about that part. We were bored. Like, yo, let's fucking do a movie. Let's do a movie. Let's fuck it. Let's do it. When are we recording? Which those will be coming out and a lot more will be coming out. I know you guys keep asking. People keep asking. When's my episode coming? It's going to be coming out. I'm going to try to just throw them out there. I might not do crazy edits with them. I might just throw them out there just to get them out there so I can get caught up. And then that's when my editing will start uptaking. But uh, yeah, so definitely check out the Z Network. It's it's fucking highly recommended. It's it's like I I'm gonna say this right now. We are on a mission to be stronger than the Avengers, and I only say that. Listen, no disrespect to the Avengers. What I mean by that is we're just a, a strong team, and we're all gonna work together like the Avengers or like uh, what's fucking Batman's group called? The Justice League. <laughs> Batman's group. He's the leader of that shit. He runs that shit. Well, technically, they say Superman is. Yeah, fuck with Superman. Batman's my favorite. Superman's yeah, cool. Sure. Don't get me wrong. I like Superman more than I used to. Yeah. Which he means he's okay. Popcorn and Pints. We got to do some Superman movies. The Christopher Reeves one and the newer ones. Real quick. Sidetrack. Sorry. About the endless. But uh, yeah, check out the Z Network. Check out everybody's pages on the Z Network. Subscribe to all their channels. Subscribe to all their Facebooks, YouTubes, Instagrams, Twitters, whatever they have. And um, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to get some good, great, funny content. As a matter of fact, tonight, 11 o'clock Eastern time, hit up, go to the Any Last Words Facebook page. 
YouTube page, or Twitch channel. Any last words? And Joe is going to be doing an interview tonight. Go check that out live, people. 8 o'clock Pacific time, 11 o'clock Eastern time. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you listen to this whole fucking episode and this whole rant because, you know, you got some dope shit out of here. Again, Joe Bizarro, great job on this movie, man. I enjoyed it myself. Like I said, I, I think it's a 7 out of 10 in my opinion. James gave it a 5, right? Yep. Which is not bad at all. Don't take that as an offense. Um, love, again, love the titties in the movie. Loves them. I love titties. I'm a, I'm a guy. Well, who doesn't? James loves titties too, don't you? Yep. Hey? But uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. And I'm going to say it to you guys because this is going to be my new live thing. As always, I'll see you in your nightmares, motherfuckers. <sighs> Drink some bitches. Sorry for calling you guys bitches. No, I'm not. That was fun, man. Hold up. Yeah. Hold up.